Merkel Media. 20,000. Oh, we got one more. Oh, my gosh. I, I, where's the wine? I should have brought wine down here. I should have brought wine down here. This is freaking bananas. I didn't think I'd get this excited. Let's go. 20,000. Who's the lucky 20,000? Who's the lucky 20,000? Come on now. Oh, come on. 20,000! Let's go! Let's go, 20,001! 20,001! Keep it going, 20,002! 20,002! Keep that going up! Keep it jacking up! Let's go! 20,000! Woo! You guys did it. You guys freaking did it. Let's go. Let's go. 20,000 subs. Are you kidding me? As LeBron would say, I'm just a kid from Akron. I'm just a kid from Hamburg, Pennsylvania. Living big dreams over here. Let's go. This was all circulating around the base that a giant had been killed, but no one was supposed to talk about it. I saw three long bony fingers reach up underneath the door, curl up to grab it, and then disappear. When he came over to me, dude, he slithered over to me. And this giant comes out of the cave and they're all frozen. And he starts running and firing at this giant. But the giant moves, he's got a spear in one hand and he's running really fast and spears Dan and holds him up like this. Somebody yells, shoot him in the face, shoot him in the face. They basically decapitate him. Got closer, got closer, got closer. When he got about 15 yards away from me, I raised that 12 gauge and I blow this head off. I feel something pulling at my leg. And I look over and there are two small gray entities pulling at me. And they're literally, I'm getting pulled off the bed. I reach my hand into this bush and I touch air. Couldn't breathe and I couldn't move because I know I'm seeing a monster. Welcome to the show, everybody. You're listening to The Confessionals. I'm your host, Tony Merkel. Thanks for being here. If you have a crazy, wild experience you want to share with me on the show, go ahead and shoot me an email. My email address is theconfessionals at theconfessionalspodcast.com. That's theconfessionals at theconfessionalspodcast.com. Or go to the website, theconfessionalspodcast.com. Hit the contact section and you can reach me that way as well. Either way works for me, just get a hold of me. If you want to hear more shows on a weekly basis, go to theconfessionalspodcast.com. Hit the join button and become a member today because you'll get access to all the membership content. That means bonus shows every Thursday. That means overtime shows. And that means the Tuesday shows ad-free right there on the appy. So if you guys want, go ahead to theconfessionalspodcast.com, hit the join button, become a member, and get access to all that stuff on the website and the app. Also, friends, preparewiththeconfessionals.com. That's preparewiththeconfessionals.com. Go there, get yourself emergency supply food and survival gear that will last you up to 25 years on the shelf. So the survival gear is going to be top-notch stuff and the food will last years to come. So it's a great deal. We have a lot of great deals going on right now. So if you want to make sure you and your family are good, you want to stock the pantry for those emergencies, go to preparewiththeconfessionals.com and get your emergency preparedness on. Friends, if you listen to the intro... Right there before the music kicked in, you heard me celebrate 20,000 subscribers on YouTube. We've grown over 10,000 subscribers in the last eight months on YouTube. And it's amazing what happens when you actually try with things like this. And about, uh, I'd say about March this year, I started trying with YouTube. And here we are. We're growing on YouTube. I plan on growing it well beyond 20,000 subscribers. So thank you, everybody who's been going there and subscribing. And if you haven't done so yet, what are you waiting for? This interview right now is going to be on video right there on YouTube. So you can watch me and my guests talk. And you can even watch me talk right 
right now on YouTube. So go over to YouTube if you haven't done so already. Look up The Confessionals. Hit subscribe because that is where we're going to be dropping all our video content moving forward. Thank you very much. Also, friends, if you hadn't had a chance, head on over to Amazon and purchase your copy of Who Saw the Men in Black, which was a documentary that I was a narrator on. Please go ahead and get that on Amazon and also leave a happy five-star rating and review if you go to Amazon for that stuff. And if you want a quick, easy access to it, hit the description right now below this episode because I have the links waiting there for you. You don't even have to do any quick searches or anything like that. Just hit the link and it'll redirect you right to where you need to go. All right, this week we have Josh coming on the show and he is the CEO of Randonautica App. Shout out to Josh for coming on the show, making the time to talk to us. Over the years, I've had people ask me about the Randonautica app. I am fascinated by this app. I've always have been. The idea of going out onto a random adventure. Like this app is supposed to give you random coordinates that you are supposed to go and find random things at these random coordinates. Like you set an intention in your head, like I'm looking for treasure, then it will give you this spot to go check and you go there and you're looking around to see if there's anything there. Usually he said within like one to three tries, you're finding something anomalous at these locations. It's really interesting. And I was always interested in it. Just the idea of the adventure going out and checking out new things, things that you normally wouldn't go and do if you weren't using the app. And uh, over the years, though, there's been a lot of controversy about the Randonautica app. Some people suggest it's like a Ouija board and you're actually talking to spirits and they're directing your path. Uh, Josh comes on to dispel some of that stuff and maybe even let some credibility in a sense to that stuff as well. I had a great conversation with Josh and he goes, into a lot of different things, but I will tell you, friends, that we are not here to tell you what to think when it comes to using this app or these kind of things in general. I am not the host of this show trying to dictate what people should think. I just host conversation with interesting people, whether it's their experiences or people like Josh, and I let you guys decide. And we live in a world right now where you're not really taught how to think for yourselves. We're living in a culture where everything's telling you what to think, how to think. And I'm here to tell you for this kind of stuff, I'm not trying to tell you what to think. I am just presenting information, stories to you, and it's up to you to make up your own decision as to what you think, how you feel you want to pursue this app, if you want to pursue the app. Those are the things that I want you guys to do as my listening audience. And so with that said, I just want you to keep that in mind as we have this conversation. At no point in time am I trying to convince people people or is Josh trying to convince people to use the Randonautica app? I have it on my phone. I honestly, friends, am just very curious about it. And we have a good conversation and I want you guys to listen to this conversation. So let's get to Josh and this fascinating conversation about the Randonautica app using quantum physics, a quantum computer to find these random generated locations. Let's go. All right. Today we got Josh on the show from Randonautica app. Josh, how you doing, man? Good, Tony. Thanks for having me on. I know a lot of people are excited about this one, so I'm ready to have some fun, talk some weird stuff, maybe some some secrets, maybe that people don't know about yet. I dig it, man. Listen, if we can get if we can get into the hidden secrets and stuff behind the doors of Randonautica or whatever, I'm down for that action, man. I uh, I absolutely am fascinated by this app, and I have been for years. I um. When I first came across Random Nautic App is when you when you guys first came out. Uh, I'm assuming. I mean, this is probably like three years ago, four years ago. Yeah, it was about three years ago. I think at this point, I have no conception of time, so it's hard for me to tell. But yeah, I was. I, yeah, it was about two or three years ago. We officially launched the app in February of 2020. Is when we built, released the app. But before that, we had a Telegram bot going that was sending people to random places. So we caught a lot of mainstream movement and stuff before we even released an app. And for the longest time, I was just like begging people to make apps to go make you go to random places. And now there's like 50 rip off yeah. apps. For ours. <laughs> but like for a long time, I was just trying to get people interested in the idea because people like just were so like sketched out about it and like... The, the same things that we're seeing repeating now, which we'll get into later, I'm, I'm sure. But like with the, with the whole public perception and these fake YouTube videos and stuff, 
it's been there since the beginning. And these same elements have been there since the beginning. And it's like almost like this shadow project projection. So when you're, when you're random nodding, you're literally we, what we call an, a random point is called an anomaly because we use this my machine interaction algorithm, right? So this supposedly our hypothesis is, a hypothesis is that your brain influences this random number generator, which can take you to a place that you are thinking about or talking about, or you set your intention towards finding this certain thing. And so like we started this thing and it was like 25 to 30 year old seekers pretty much like, and we were like really taking it seriously as an experiment. And then it, it blew up in, on TikTok and went crazy. And people started using it for reasons that the original members would never do like, like going out with the intention of looking for death. Like we would never use it that it wasn't intended for that, but it became that because the collective unconscious, especially being locked up in COVID lockdown and everything, that's what was on people's minds. And so you kind of saw the collective unconscious conjure this death and scariness. And then that's what really took hold. And, um, they found the dead body and that's what really like blasts. I mean, it was like, going on national TV, like the next day, rearranging my girlfriend's apartment, <laughs> and my now wife, it, like, it's crazy. Like how, how that happened. Like, but we, we ended up being part of a story that solved like a crime, you know, that people will see, Oh, they just found a dead body. It must be bad. But that's really your shadow projection of what your intention is based on. Yeah, really. It's like looking into a mirror because it's based on your intention. So if you only see the bad parts, that's really you're looking at yourself kind of, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, and that's interesting that you you say that with the whole collective consciousness and how things were uh, in 2020 and obviously 2021 and uh, yeah. the, the finding the dead bodies and things like that. So this, um, the way this is, this is happening then is so you, you were trying to find somebody to build this random generator app. And, uh, how, how did, where does the the quantum level of a computing come in play here? Because from what I understand, uh, there's some kind of quantum computer in Australia that you guys are using, and yeah, so we're yeah, we're basically we're using a quantum random number generator that's used in Australia, and they offer an API that anyone can use. You can go to the website; it's qrng.anu.edu. Anyone can use it. Um, it's a reliable source of quantum random numbers. And so like the, the idea is that quantum random numbers are truly random. They're truly unpredictable. Whereas pseudo random numbers, which is what people generally generate like on their phones or it's using a lot of software for a lot of reasons, but it's generated deterministically. So like there's a seed. And if you know that seed, you can predict the entire string of random numbers. However, with the quantum one, there's no predicting it that, 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 that anyone has found so far anyway. That, so it's, it's seen as being truly random. And so that's why we have the options of using pseudo randomness, which hypothetically could not be influenced by consciousness because it's already deterministic. It's already set in stone what the numbers are going to be. Whereas a quantum random number generator could be any number and, and you, there's no way to expect it. It's a, it's, a, it's a high level of entropy. And so what, what entropy does is, is, it, is it makes this unexpected kind of like thing that your mind can influence. That's the hypothesis. And so once your mind influences the entropy, it becomes non-random. So if you use the random number generator, to find a location that you were thinking about finding, that's not a random event. That's actually a causal event. So that's the kind of paradox that's kind of interesting. It's like, it's all random nodding, it's all random, but if you truly did influence it, it wouldn't be random. It would actually be causal. So there's a lot of different ways to look at it. And a lot, a lot of people have their own pet theories and that's part of the, the I think the fun of it is everybody kind of like, has, has a pet theory like yeah the w w what we call anomalies this is where i was going with this now i remember we what we call anomalies are these like close 
clusters of random dots put on a radius. And, and they're so densely clustered that they are so statistically different from a normal random distribution that we think there might be something interesting there. But when we talk about anomalies, the brain sees an anomaly as a threat. So we go about our daily lives and if something is out of place, we notice it and we, you know, our brain is kind of kind of telling us to protect ourselves from that. And so what we found is people have this sense of despair or, or fear at just at the prospect of going to a random location. Like there must be something behind it. It must be human traffickers. They must be collecting our data. We don't, we don't, we don't sell any data. We don't do anything like that. Like it's not hackable. People will come up with all these, all these explanations. Like they're listening to our phones and then <laughs> sending us to a place that has something to do with us. And like that would be so much harder than what we're actually doing. Like if we had the capacity to do that, we would be like billionaires probably. Like, yeah. But we, we were not doing that. We're doing experimental consciousness research, which unfortunately isn't like the big money thing right now. But I think it is kind of sort of going in that direction. So No, I, I think it definitely is going in that direction. And, and one word of advice as somebody who's been dealing with this type of community for at least five years publicly, uh, the moment you start collecting people's data, you lose your base. So right. <laughs> the, like the, these are the people who are, really into the random nodding and this kind of stuff, uh, they have a general distrust of authority. And so yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, As do I. I mean and and we our employees will would quit if we started selling that data. Like yeah. I mean then how it is. Then like, now yeah. now you might as well just call yourself big tech. I mean that's that's yeah, exactly what it is. Exactly. Uh, and we had, we said no to big tech. We we got an offer from awesome. a big um uh investment firm and we said no, we're gonna bootstrap it and we're gonna just take the money that we make and feed our developers and not take the because the first question they asked me was, How do we make this app more addictive? And I was like, Whoa, this isn't about being addictive, this is about being more connected to the world finding places you didn't know about, you know, finding meaning, which, which is like the biggest problem I think in like our generation is like people have meaning, this feeling of meaninglessness. And yes. when you find a synchronicity or a coincidence that's meaningful to you, you find meaning in that. And that's something that like, especially when you're cooped up in your house all day and you literally can't go anywhere and you can't meet up with your friends, finding meaning in the outside world is like magic almost. And so, and, and, and it just works. And so I have personally kind of like, I was like a really true believer in the my machine interaction stuff because I have seen some cool stuff where we can influence the odds of something like five to 10% above chance, which like was really exciting because like, if you consider that to like going to a casino or something and winning five to 10% above chance, you could make a lot of money. Like for instance, that's a practical application of gaming randomness. So we're not really interested in, in gaming the stock market or um, casinos, but a lot of people who do this kind of research are going to casinos and they're using my machine interaction to influence um, uh, slot machines. This is something I should not be saying, right? But I am. Um, <laughs> And then once you can influence the slot machines, you can go to the card table and influence the decks that are being shuffled. So that's where I started going. Well, does it matter if if it's pseudo random or quantum random? Is it or is it just all some phenomenon that is going to happen regardless? Because people go random nodding without the app. It's like there was the derive. Like with uh, Guy Debord and all of those people, the letterists, the situationists, and there's all these yogis who can make things manifest. And like, it's like a city spiritual power, like in a lot of traditions to be able to do this, like to kind of like know where you're going and know that you're going to find it. And um, we just basically took the, a lot of steps out of it and just gave people a direction to go. And then once they start looking, they find it. It's not in the app. It's in the brain. Like even the like influencing of probabilities and influencing of random number generators, it's, it's using your brain 
as a biofeedback device. We're not claiming that the random number generator is accessing the conscious field. We're claiming or hypothesizing that the, your brain connects to the conscious field and the random number generator just acts as a biofeedback device. So it goes, oh, I'm, I'm just kind of like looking at your brain where it's influencing the bias of the distribution of random numbers. And then it kind of like will find a hit point and it doesn't work every time. It doesn't work every time. And people like will give us like a one-star review, like, oh, I just found a street or something. It's like, it's about the whole experience. Like you need to go like, where you're going and coming and you can deviate from the journey and some of the coolest stuff I've found just while I was random nodding, but not at the point. Exactly. Like just, it's better that the rule of thumb basically is to tie three chains of points together. So you, you start off somewhere, go somewhere random, then go somewhere random from there and then go there from there. And once you hit three, you'll usually find something that's just kind of weird and out of place. And like unexplainable kind of just like, wow, that that was weird. So that's what kind of tickled my fancy. So what on, on what, all right. So if, if you're going to hit maybe something that's kind of out of place, one in three tries and and in consecutive, not like today, tomorrow, and the next day, uh, what are the, the odds of that uh, out of that? What are the odds of having an intention and finding that intention in one of those places, you know? Um, so that's something we're interested in and in, in scientifically measuring. So we, 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 like we said, we didn't collect data at all, at all for a long time. And now we have anonymized data that people can, can like access in our company. That's all anonymized, but we can start measuring kind of like what, where these anomalies are being generated and like, if there are like more anomalies in certain places, then could be because it may be environmentally mediated. So there's like one hypothesis. There's a, a researcher who wants to do a collaboration with us that he's looking at um, places where there are magnetic anomalies. And he, he's wondering if like we could compare our data um, to see if there's more anomalies at um, magnetic anomaly zones could be, I don't know, but that, that's something interesting to look at that we're, we're, we're going to look at. That's cool. I mean, a, a lot of that kind of stuff is just like way above my head. I'm just like it, talking about the data and collecting data. And that, I'm just like, okay, so tell me something yeah. else. Like, um, but so let me ask you this, uh, and this is kind of maybe for me, but also the audience, you're describing how this kind of works and, and generally how you're trying to understand it. Because they, they, I just want to say to the audience, this is new technology. We don't understand the quant- quantum realm. So like when we have an app that's using a quantum computer uh, to, to do this kind of stuff, it's so new that it's like you guys own the app, but you're still trying to figure out how it all works. And, exactly. and so if I can just maybe draw this picture uh, and you tell me if it's accurate or not. Um, so we're, you, what you're saying is our, our brains are already making these intents every day. They were always putting the stuff out. And, and because we don't totally understand the quantum realm, these thoughts for the beginning of time have been going into this quantum realm theoretically. And right. this, the app that you guys have is basically uh, like a landing spot for these intents that we have always been putting out. And it's in my mind. I, I envision the, a car scenario. So I don't know if you're a car guy. I, I used to be a car guy. I'm Not kind of really. like, kind of like recovering, where uh, <laughs> I'm trying to forget everything I knew. So, yeah. uh, but if you have a leak on your car, one thing that is a age old trick is you take a piece of cardboard, you slide it underneath your engine, and you, and the next morning you come out and you see the drips on uh, on the cardboard, uh, and you can see exactly works. where that was coming from. Mm-hmm. It, is it kind of like that where your brain is leaking these intents and the 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 app is like the cardboard yeah. just tr- it's showing you where catchy. where to go? Yeah, so that's what I mean by biofeedback. So like when we have a blip of dots on this radius, it's like clustered to an improbable degree. They use what's called a Z-score in consciousness research. So th- this is all research that's been done by the federal government 
you can look up um, on CIA.gov, Project Stargate, and I actually talked to the guy who the CIA bought the random number generators from. And he said that there is no working theory about how this works. And it has maybe something to do with how things are connected and some kind of quantum mechanics um, to do with how like everything is connected, but we don't, it's, it's a quantum mechanics we don't understand yet. So yes, to, to answer that question, we, we don't know. We, what we're doing is fiddling with little variables to see if we can get a practical effect out of it. So we're not so much concerned with a lot of like Dean Radin, Roger Nelson, those kind of people have done this research where they're like bringing people into labs and they're like pressing buttons to like, you know, make a ball move or a graph move up if they're concentrating and they'll bring in experienced meditators and they'll do better on these tests than just regular people that they'll bring in for controls. And those people are very like, concerned with proving some kind of statistical phenomenon. So well, that's not what we're doing at all. We're not measuring statistical phenomenon. We're uh, measuring, I guess, phenomenological uh, data, which is people's stories. We were, we're really just interested in that. And that was really my spin on it, kind of. I, I saw a random number generator and I said, hey, you could be the hero of your own legend through your own story if you just go out into the unknown. And that was kind of my stamp on it. And people are going to have lots of different takes on it. And it's already happening. that People are using this kind of idea and branching off and making cool stuff. So like, I'm excited about like what maybe like gaming will look at, will look like if we can consciously influence, like, you know, if, if you're like, you know, shot somebody in uh, CSGO or whatever, a uh, counter-strike or whatever, and it, part of it had to do with your intention and how strong your intention was, that could be like cool as a practical application. Or like, you know, thinking, I want my lights to turn on and then your lights just turn on. That would be a cool practical application. And there have been um, people who do stuff like this where they like, make lights that light up in a circle. So this is like uh, the first study I could find on this is they connected LED lights to a, uh, a like radioactive decay isotope thing. And that was their method of generating randomness. And they would try and make the lights light up in a circle. And that was like the first study. And it was like in 1950 or 60 or something. So like, this research has been, been going on behind a veil, though. Like, we kind of pushed it more to the front, and it's getting kind of ob obfuscated because, like, it's just this now a, a narrative about a scary app, which is I right. love being an urban legend. Like, I love that. I, I think it's great. But there is, like, some science behind it. And so we're starting to work with real academics and, like, people who actually have PhDs who have spent 20 years in a lab studying this stuff. And they're finally kind of, like, opening up to us. And, like, um, because we're, we weren't strictly controlled, we, we were kind of punk rock about it. Like, they never would have just unleashed what we did onto the Internet. They would be, like, let's have two people in a lab and see – you know, and then it's like we have this amazing infrastructure for like mass experiments on like human consciousness. And like, I just felt like it was time for it to not be hidden anymore because it was already this research was already going on behind closed doors. There's a marketing firm called Qualtrics, which you will find that they market to people, but they also did a public QRNG quantum random number generator test where they had people look at a string of random numbers generated by a quantum random number generator. And they said if the numbers were significant to them in some way. And most of the time they were significant to them in some way, like it was their address or it was their phone number or their friend's phone number or something. But it's funny to me that this marketing firm is experimenting in this same thing. So you could be marketed to based on intent. So a lot of people, you know, with a, with a Facebook like thing, like, Oh, I just thought of that. I didn't type it into Google. I didn't say it, but somehow I got this ad for whatever. 
butt wipes. I don't know. Yeah. But like, whatever, you were just thinking about it, but you weren't going to type it in, but it comes up. I think they're using it. I think they're using it to market. I'm thinking they're using a market on people. I think they're using it on they people. Are. And I wanted people to use it for themselves. So that that, yeah. that was kind of my mission. Well, uh, it, it's the concept of, you know, you're, you're thinking about a song on the radio, you turn on the radio in your car and all of a sudden it's playing at that same spot in your head and stuff. They, they, yeah. they, there's something there. There's obviously something here, there because I just said something that you nod your head to because you've heard of it. You've probably experienced it. Everybody listening has experienced right. it. So there's literally something there and they're trying to harness it. It just happened to me this past week in a way uh, where I'm working on uh, developing a, a new way I'm going to do interviews. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm trying to scrap... Um, Zoom and all that stuff. And I'm trying to do something, basically step my game up. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm looking at different technologies. And uh, the next day, one of those technologies I hadn't found yet liked my show huh. on Facebook. Wow. And so like, it, it's, it's like some, it, it could be easily, you know, them collecting my data and then selling my data to companies that want it kind of thing. But it, 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 it it's going to get to the point where the consciousness, they are able to tap into the consciousness and like this little cluster of dots over here is an anomaly. Let's go get that because it's already right. looking for us. You know, it's, right. it's almost like reversing what we're doing here with Randall Not, where it's like you're going to look for the anomaly. Well, all of a sudden, somebody else identifies you as the anomaly and they come to you. Intention. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. When coupled with machine learning, I think that um, you could really do some crazy stuff like that. Like, uh, this is only the conjecture that I've heard, but I've heard that if you replace um, some machine learning algorithms, random component with a more responsive, um, piece of hardware because there's not all random number generators are made the same. I have one that uses electron tunneling technique, which is different than what Randonautica uses. We use AMU's photon. So they're both bouncing a blazer off a mirror and counting the photons. And what this electron tunneling technique does is, is, is the same thing, but it's in like a USB stick style thing. So like there's different kinds of, 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 of ways of, generating this randomness and like um I, I i don't know if i i was like super into like finding out those variables and like but now i kind of am thinking it's a broader thing and like it's everywhere and it's not just with random number generators it's like it's just popping up everywhere. Like it's bigger than I kind of expected. And, that, and, and I think that you, you looking at, at coincidences and stuff can be part of your spiritual journey, but it's not the end of it. It's just a little reminder that there's something going on. It's not the end of it. You never go, Oh, I had a coincidence and now I'm enlightened. You know, like it's right. not going to happen. I may be to somebody, but I have yet to see it happen. I, you know, I, I think I've yet to see an enlightened individual truly. So, you know, I, I'm not claiming that it'll change your life. And, and in fact, I would, would warn people because people do use it as a divinatory technique where they're like, well, does this person love me? And then they'll go to some random spot and try and like decipher what that place is telling them, which is called geomancy, which I think is very dangerous because you're putting the choice in the hands of just randomness or some kind of influence that you have no idea what it is. What, what I like is using randomness to explore possibilities you would not have considered before and opening new potentials and new possible timelines, new possible probability tunnels. So like if you are in a neighborhood and all there are are houses and you set your intent for like fairyland castle, Unless there's an actual fairyland castle, like bounce house there, you're not going to find a fairyland castle. Like it only increases the probability of you finding what is already there. It's not going to just like manifest a completely new dimension or something. But if you set your intent for a red door in a neighborhood, chances are you'll probably find a red door faster using randonautica than if you were just using your deterministic kind of like however you drive around that neighborhood which you think is random but it's not really random so that makes sense and and that it, i know i 
I almost feel like I shouldn't bring it back up because you said you were kind of cautious about saying it, but it makes sense with the whole going to casinos and stuff. I mean, people walking into a casino, there's money already there. There's already games to win money there. So now you're setting a tense as to what slot machine, it, it, take me to a slot machine prime to dish out money. Yeah. I mean, but, 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 the gamblers have this language already though. Like, oh, I'm feeling hot or I'm feeling cold. People experimenting with randomness go through this same kind of, oh, I feel hot. I can influence it. Oh, I feel cold. I can't influence it. So like, there's the same kind of like it, gamblers is a, it's a good, it's um, gambling is good for like teaching statistics and for explaining this kind of phenomenon, I guess, because be, like it, it's such a, people understand gambling, I guess. And they understand like money. And it's easier to think of it in terms of money because it's like valuable, you know? And so like, yeah, if you had a 10% edge on the house, which people know it's crazy, like people will play blackjack just to get a 1% edge. They'll like nerd out forever to get a 1% edge. <laughs> you know, if you had a 10 to 30% edge, I know people who have been banned from casinos for, for, from using this stuff. So like that to me is like proof is that they got banned from a casino because the casino didn't want them taking any more of their money. <laughs> wow. And that was because they were using the random not app. Well, no, not necessarily, but they were training gotcha. to influence probabilities using randomness, which is what using the random not app does. It trains, it literally is training you to influence probabilities. It's literally teaching you how to be lucky. So like at a certain point, you don't need the app. So, um, all right. <laughs> my mind's getting, my mind is going a million miles an hour right now. Uh, bef after you and I are done talking, I need to talk to you about, uh, some things off air for me personally. Okay. <laughs> uh, and it's not it's just for people listening. I'm not trying to make out money wise. This is so, something totally different. I'm thinking about. Um, but, uh, so what, the way you're describing this stuff, uh, kind of dispels, at least from your perspective, uh, how things work, the idea that many people that have heard me talk about Random Knot and they know about you guys, they suggest that it's a giant Ouija board. Yeah. And and so it, like what you're saying is from was from your perspective that there isn't uh, like you're not you're not reaching out into the unknown to have uh, an entity then point point at the map as to where to go. There's no that angle of things with right. a Ouija board where you're like asking questions to the un unknown entity. You this for you from your perspective is a very much uh, unknown science angle that we're learning as we go, and you guys just simply have to happen to be one of the first practical tools that people right. can have to try to experiment with new technology or new, new science that isn't really well known yet. Yeah. Well, I, I see why people would compare it to a Ouija board, but to me, it's something so much bigger, but maybe that's because I've seen the sausage being made behind the scenes. It's not just, I've seen people use a, I don't even like saying that word, uh, spirit board, Really, but it is similar to the spiritualists, um, like we're in a sort of sort of spiritual revival period, similar to when the spiritualists got their hands on the spirit board. So like, yeah, I don't really mind because like Ouija is uh, trademarked by Hasbro or something. I'm pretty sure. Like, I don't really mind being the Ouija of quantum divination. If Randonautica is that, you know, just for branding purposes, Cool. <laughs> right. Whatever. Like you could use it as that if you wanted to. I wouldn't suggest it. Um, I wouldn't suggest it. But yeah, you you could totally appeal to. And then this gets it. This, this is weird because like people ask me all the time, like, is, is this against my religion? And, and, and I have to tell them, like, I am not a spiritual leader. I cannot answer this question for you. This is for you and your spiritual guidance counselor right. or, or like that's why I went by comrade for so long because I didn't want people thinking I had some kind of answer. I don't, I don't have an answer. I only have more questions and more mystery and curiosity. That's it. So like in the Catholic church, divination is strictly forbidden, right? You, you cannot like try and tell the future. However, you can petition saints. You can pray to saints and you can ask saints for stuff. 
So in my mind, I'm thinking if you use Randonautica to contact some goetic, goetic demon or something, that would be definitely against the Catholic Church. But if you used it to talk to, talk to St. Anthony to find your lost dog, that I don't think that would uh, be against um, the Catholic Church's rules, honestly. And the Catholic Church, well, the Vatican does a lot of this kind of research, actually, yes. as I found, yes. like as you get deeper and deeper into it, they are way into consciousness studies and they want to be on top of all of that kind of stuff. So yeah, people, someone, someone actually suggested I go to the Vatican for funding. <laughs> now, you know what? Maybe, right? Uh, th- there's a lot of... Uh, I-, I could go down the conspiracy rabbit hole when it comes to uh, the Catholic Church, but also just yeah. just different organized religion. Now, uh, you-, you know, I know you're kind of new. You're, you're not, you don't really follow the show, per se. I- I'm a Christian, and, um, and I-, I don't really pretend to not be, right? Uh, right. It- it- but the- when it comes to the idea of organized religion, there's a lot of issues and beef that I have with a lot of it. Uh, and, yeah. and so anybody who is out there that would go to you and ask it, is this against my religion? It, it's more of a question that the question's phrased wrong. Uh, and, right. it, 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 and it's also directed wrong. So there's, there should be, not be a question that goes to you, but it should be an introspective question that says, does this right. go against what I believe in my heart is right, right. or wrong? And, and right. if you, if, it, if you have a gut feeling that it is something that is wrong for you to be doing against your beliefs, you, Josh isn't here to sell, tell you to do it anyways. I'm not here to tell you to do it anyways. No way. Yeah. Like that, that's the, that's the beauty of America with freedom of religion. You're allowed to believe what you want to believe and follow what you want to believe. And that's a beautiful thing. Uh, it, yeah. So it's it's misguided questioning because we are in a culture where we so desperately want people to tell us, just tell me what to do and I'll do it. Just tell me what to think and I'll think it because that's the way we've been conditioned for so many decades now through mainstream propaganda and things like that. It's like, pl- just I'm so used to everybody just telling me this is what it is. This is how do you do it. Right. The, the idea of being introspective and saying, what do I think? What do I believe? That That's mm-hmm. a foreign thing. So uh, yeah. I, I, I would encourage everybody who is listening right now, who maybe is thinking those kind of things to, to pause on that and just think, what do I think? You know, yeah. and, and, and just follow your own gut. If you pray, right. pray about it. Yeah, exactly. There, there's, the, there's, your, there's your answer right there. And, and I would say that uh, my spiritual beliefs are based in like, probably I would call it esoteric Christianity. Um, I would, I would definitely say my, my beliefs are rooted in Christianity. Um, but of course there's like organized religion and all of these things that go terribly wrong. You know, when any group, you know, starts just doing major things, horrible, horrible atrocities happen. So yeah, yeah this, that's neither, neither here nor there, but yeah, it is interesting that like I can consider myself a Christian and still use Renonautica, but other people are like, Oh, he's talking to demons. Right. When it's only positively affected my life, like, and only actually affirmed my faith, actually, because I was less spiritual and I was more like atheistic. And this actually has confirmed my faith. So that's kind of interesting. That's, it's all based on like a matter of perspective. You and, know? And, and what you just said there is so interesting, too, because that's the same kind of uh, the way I look at it is uh, with the flat earth stuff. I When the flat earth stuff was really popular, I mean, I don't know if it's still popular or not anymore. I don't know. But when it was really popular like a year or two ago, there were so many people who were saying they came to Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior through right. writing the flat earth theory. And so it's like, that for you, like, like you actually strengthen your spiritual life because of this, where you were, you feel like you were further away from your creator right. at, at one point. And so I find it really interesting. And, and even with this show, I mean, it's a paranormal show. Yes. I'm a Christian and we do, we have just different kind of vibes going on around here. Cause it's like a, it's mm-hmm. like a, it's like a potluck. It's like a mix of everything, you know? Yeah. Um, but I've had people email me saying because of the show, they are now going to church or they, they right. became, became a Christian, all this stuff. And it's just like uh, a paranormal show did that. That's that's I find yeah. that pretty amazing. And so yeah. it's about perspectives and everybody comes from their own different path and, and, and place in yeah. life. And you just never know what stone you're going to unturn that's going to change your life, you know, for you yeah, and not. I have a good story about that, actually. Like someone went random nodding. This is a post you could probably find on the subreddit by searching demon. So someone um, went random nodding with the intention of demon, which I would never advise. Like, why would you want to you want to invite things that you want into your life? 
I don't think a, a <laughs> mentally well person wants a demon in their life, but they found a piece of graffiti that said demon. And what did they do? Called their mom crying and their mom prayed with them and they got closer to Jesus because of this wow. experience. So it's kind of a roundabout way, you know, but it, it is interesting that like this secure circuitous path, like this is what we are doing is like people always think of things from their logical predecessors. We're going, no, we're going outside of our logical predecessors, you know, and that's how all of science is built. All of science is a house of cards built on a bunch of logical assumptions from tests they did, you know, and they were objectively said, okay, we can objectively measure this. Therefore we can objectively do this. And we're going, no, we're going to use randomness to start studying things that we couldn't have logically have landed on using the huge structure of science as it is now. And that's one of the main things we really, really want to encourage people to do is citizen science and to maybe like get together with some friends who are interested in a topic and really start researching this and like join the rhizome. Basically, there's a million nodes up there, out there of people doing research. I'm sure like, you know, you're one of them. You have a group of people and they're amassing this information. And it's like this like dist- distributed network of like people processing this information. And it ends up all helping us in the end when we share the information. So I, I would I would definitely suggest to people this is this is what, what we call novelism is we want to get we want to get like science out of the hands of the few and into the hands of the many. And so what this takes is decentralized open source kind of networking. So like I would never hide any papers I found on this kind of subject. And that's how I was able to find a bunch of people smarter than me to help develop what I could see was a possible like angle into mainstream culture. And, you know, that happened through being open, you know, not being closed off. And that is very unintuitive to a lot of people because we're taught, oh, you got to hoard it. It has to be yours. Mine, mine, mine. This is my information, my research. It's like, no, it's a paper you found on the internet. Share it with someone, (laughs) you know, and then they'll give you some feedback that you wouldn't have thought of. And, And this is like, how Randonautica was initially built basically was just from people just experimenting with different things. And, and we eventually found like methods that we can't explain how it works, but practically we can say we're using Randonautica it increases attention response. It, it, it incre- increases focus. We can say these things. We can say that um, there's a, a scientific study that says going to novel places makes you happier. There's a, uh, you know, honest to God academic study that shows peer reviewed that people going to just novel places, just new places, it creates new neural pathways and it makes you actually happier. So like there's some things we, we can say for sure from Randonautica, like that we have found. And, and this is like, we're not the only ones doing this. Like there's all sorts of people, in, you know, investigating coincidences and randomness. And this was just kind of like our team's spin on it. Yeah. You know, it's every new level of science has a doorway that everybody has to walk through. And it's like Randonautica is that doormat that everybody has to step on as they go through that doorway. And yeah. it, it, it's, it's really uh, something that it takes a special type of uh, mindset to to be that uh, because what you're describing is stuff uh, nobody wants to be the platform where everybody just kind of steps on to get to the next level but nobody really appreciates kind of thing at the end of the right. day but you're just like for the, for the betterment of of the future of this this new science this new whatever you yeah. want to call it, it it's somebody has to be that doormat you know of just yeah. people just being willing to share with with everybody who approaches that that doorway and yeah. uh, I, I find that really cool um, now, let me ask you about uh, 
So we, we talked about maybe more of the spiritual side of like you personally yeah. and how it's helped and, and me, the show, this, this, that, and the other, and the idea of uh, Christian values and things like that. And you mentioned about more esoteric Christian. Uh, maybe if you want, and you don't have to, if you want, maybe elaborate more on what you mean specifically by the esoteric Christianity, because uh, the next question I would have is a, a conspiracy theory that I've seen about your your app uh, which is the logo, the owl, uh, because people are talking about, you know, this is, this is, uh, evil Ouija board, this, that, and the other, then they have the owl. So now we're saying it's occultic, it's an occultic organization yeah. and you're willingly participating in occultism and all that stuff. So take it away. I just gave you a load of chamber. Okay. I would love to, I would love to address this. So yes, we are absolutely dabbling in the occult because okay. what is the occult? The occult is what is hidden. And when you go random nodding, you are shining a light on what is hidden. So you are literally diving into the occult, the hidden. And so that's what the owl represents because the owl sees in the dark. And a random knot learns their entire geographic landscape by going to random places. And through that, they can see in the dark. So people have all these conspiracies like, Oh, the owl is Moloch. It's child sacrifice. It's like, no, it's the wisdom you gained on your journey. And the owl can see in the dark and twist its head in all directions. You know, it's like people can't quite see that many layers deep, but I experienced it. A bunch of other people experienced it. Like owls just started popping up when you deal with randomness, owls pop up when you deal with the phenomenon. Owls pop up. I mean, when I was like 19 years old, a huge owl flew into my truck and was flapping around its wings. Like, just if that wasn't an omen, I don't know what right. was. Just like it was the biggest owl I've ever seen. It was huge. And like, yeah. So to, to say we're dabbling in the occult, it's like, it's kind of a gotcha question because it's like, yes, we are de dealing in the hidden stuff but are we doing like satanic rituals fuck no like right. nobody so, is so like people people when when they are thinking that you're dabbling in the occult and stuff they're thinking you're satanist and that you're you, you guys are trying to unleash demons on the world and through this app and things like that so you're you're saying quite the opposite you know you're, i'm like, saying that demons more, are now <laughs> right. um, and that's your shadow projection of what you think randonautica is and that's coming from you and that is something for you to deal with in your perspective and if you still think that us going to random places to find novelty is satanic be my guest like i don't have a problem with it because i know what i am you know i've been right. peace and love all my life and i knew i would be mislabeled i, I remember telling my my wife this before we got married we were camping and i was like it was right before we blew up and i was like i know i'm going to be mislabeled but you know that i've always been peace and love always been peace and love and when the, they found the dead body it was like this guy's a murderer even though he lives in texas and they found a body in seattle he's somehow a murderer and it's like i'm like dexter or something some evil <laughs> genius who can pull off this murder but i knew i would be misrepresented and miss you know and that I don't mind it. I, I like kind of encourage it. The mystery. And like if someone wants to call me an Illuminati lizard person, I will never <laughs> deny that. I will never deny that because it gives me so much power. Like, yeah, okay. I'm a crazy occult magician who made 18 million people, you know, uh, do a ritual that changed earth like forever. Okay, fine. <laughs> like, I will never deny that. Like, <laughs> so, yeah, I, and I, I kind of get similar things thrown at me. Uh, I recently just started taking YouTube series. I've been podcasting for five years, and just this year, I think in March or something, I started taking YouTube serious, and it's been growing and things like that. But be because it's growing on YouTube, uh, there are new people coming to the show that never knew about mm -hmm. the show. So they don't have the long history that the listening audience has of knowing right. who their host is. And right. so they, they, they tune in to, they know it's paranormal for, for the title's sake or whatever. And they see right. the logo, the one that's been on the wall behind me. And they're like, this guy's clearly an occultist because yeah. he's showing one he's out, Alistair Crowley or something. Yeah. yeah. He, he looks I like, can totally he, see it. he looks like Anton LaVey. He's covering, yeah. he's covering one eye. He has, like totally he yeah. has the black and white logo. And I'm just like, actually, the truth of the matter is 
the very first logo we had is very similar to that. Only I slapped it together from images off Google because I didn't think the show was going to last. And then when I decided <laughs> to make the logo, my artist said, send me pictures of your face I, I, I doing the what we were doing on the logo originally, was, which which was the Shush uh, logo. Yeah. And he took my face and did that. And I was like, it looks cool to me. Sounds cool, Sounds yeah. Good. <laughs> Not much thought process went into it. Just give me a cool looking yeah. logo, Lika. And he came up with it. So... <laughs> Yeah, it, it's. I it, mean, the mislabeling yeah. is rampant. It's because it, it's it's kind of circles back to what you were talking about earlier in the show, which you know it, the app giving people uh, maybe meaning in in a sense mm-hmm. where it's like you know you're locked up in the house, you're bored, you, you maybe you're a depressed person, you have no hobbies, your life just seems like. Um, I, I go to work, I can barely pay my, pay my bills and this is what my life is. And all of a sudden you find this free app or whatever it is. Maybe it's a few bucks to download. I don't remember, but uh, you download it and all of a sudden you're using it and it gives you a hobby, gives you something to do. You think it's cool. You feel like you're tapping into something that is just unknown yeah. and uh, it gives you that, that meaning and stuff. And, and so there's that angle of it, but then there's also the angle of the mislabeling and people are like, nope, it's just completely evil. I guarantee you that I'm going to have people emailing me telling me that this is this is an evil app and here's why. And I should have asked this question because it would have been the yeah. question to expose everything. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Which I, mean, I welcome, by the way. I welcome those emails. Yeah. I, I mean, I welcome skepticism in general, but I, I think shadow projection is a very real thing. And um, we're dealing with coincidence. Call Gustav Young has to come up and he talks about the shadow in length. And the shadow is like when you're projecting all of these bad things, they're basically yourself onto something else. And so you haven't kind of integrated this sort of like being able to dive into the mystery because you just go, no, the mystery is demons. I don't, I don't want to learn the nuances of, because I do believe there is good and evil. And I do believe there are demons. And I do believe that if you really wanted to, you could probably get a demon to influence you using random nautica. That would be totally up to you, though. We don't but would not suggest that at all. I would yeah, but here's warn the, people against that. Like, yeah, And here's the thing with that, that concept, though, which you just said, is that, yeah, so you just said that uh, you, you could use it for that kind of purpose. But it's not just random Nautica that you can use for that purpose. Right. I literally can make a Ouija board in my office out of yeah. crumbled up piece of paper that I uh, and, and and do the same thing. I can literally yeah. sit here with a with a necklace and hold it in the air with a yes yeah. and no underneath it and and start asking questions. Like you don't right. need random Nautica. You don't need a Ouija board from uh, right. the, the toy store. Like you can literally use anything because like now it circles full circle. It's about intent and what are right. your intents. And, 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 and so, uh, it, it's, it's one of those things where you brought that up and I just wanted to interject there because it, I, I want to people understand that you literally don't need Randonautica to summon a demon. I can right. start trying to summon a demon right now right. Right. by just asking for it. I don't even need a tool. I can just start asking and inviting these things in my life because, right. uh, like kind of like what you were talking about earlier and stuff, uh, about how you feel like this, there, there's a lot, this is, there, there's a lot more going on here and it's always been here kind of thing. It, it's, it's similar in the, my, my thought process with the paranormal where it's like, I believe that there's spiritual activity going on around us right now all the time. I and I, and I just think that there are there are some people who maybe are more open to having those experiences than other yeah. people, uh, and, and so it's not a matter of uh, of me using something to call a demon from a mile away down the road. Right. I believe that stuff's happening right now around me. If I want to access right. it, I can. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. In many ways, and and I I would say don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> like right. don't, you don't want to do that. Like and and it is actually probably much harder to get an angel to deal with you because you probably are not like on their wavelength, you know, like, <laughs> you know, like it's just like, uh, they, they, they have certain rules and a lot of people probably, even if they think they can, couldn't, couldn't line up to that kind of like agenda or whatever. Like it's the spiritual path is, is, is a difficult one, you know, and, and being a righteous person and living by moral principles is difficult. It's not an easy thing to do. And, and people want to put the responsibility on us for other people's like 
using it as like, oh my God, I found a scary baby doll in the woods. This is like, we didn't do that. We never encouraged that behavior. We said, that's bullshit. Stop that. This is not what this is about. Doesn't matter. It's going to take off on YouTube. But like, but as soon as we hit blew up on TikTok, David Metcalf from the Anomalist was like, expect to find a, a scary hidden footage or whatever found found footage horror film in the next 24 hours. And indeed I, I had already found that <laughs> like someone already had made it by the time he predicted it would be made. Like as soon as we blew up on TikTok, people were like, okay, this will be a perfect for the creepy kind of. And, and I had people telling me that I should go down that route years, years before we blew up on TikTok. They were like, this is what you want because it's going to just blow up your trajectory. And, and I was just kind of like, no, it took me a lot of energy to make it positive in the first place. And like, there's still people around today who remember the old days where it wasn't like, oh, there's people who emailed our customer service and they were like, how do I get stalked? I want to make a YouTube video about being stalked. Wow. It's like, obviously this person is like a minor or just accident prone or something. I don't know. But like when you have to take responsibility for 18 million people's actions, yeah, there's some fucked up shit that happens. You know, so, people go on rail yards, they'll break into houses and like all this stuff gets pushed onto us. And it's like, dude, we never told you to break into a house to look for a ghost. Okay, let's talk about a sponsor for today's show, which is Cerebral. We've had Cerebral on the show before. Cerebral is an online mental health service that offers prescription medication, counseling, and therapy for anxiety, depression, ADHD, insomnia, and more. This is a great service for people who are maybe confined to their house, can't get out, or really just have a hard time with taking care of their schedule because they're so jam-packed with things to do. Cerebral works around your schedule. You don't got to check into an office to talk to somebody in person. It's all done online through video sessions in the comfort of your own home. Wherever you're most comfortable at in your house, you can do it on your iPad, your phone, or your computer. It does not matter. And the great thing about Cerebral is they do deliver your prescriptions right to your door. No more waiting in the long line at CVS. No more waiting in the drive through at CVS, it gets delivered right to your front door every time on time. And that's Cerebral's way of doing things. And friends, you're going to save a lot more money with Cerebral because for our listeners of this program, you can receive 65% off your first month of medication management and care counseling at GetCerebral.com slash Tony. Go to GetCerebral.com slash Tony for 65% off your first month. That's just a total of $30 to get started. Join Cerebral today on their mission to make quality mental health care accessible and affordable for all. The 18 million users, that's a lot of people. And yeah. of 18 million people, uh, how often, because I'm sure it's happened, how often have you had somebody saying that they want to sue you because of something that's happened on the app? Nah, never. never? We had really? like, you know, we had one person who was like, they didn't think they, they didn't quite understand that it was just randomly generated. They thought it was like a Pokemon spot where we keep coming up there, but it was just like the, the police are going to go to the person who perpetrated the, the crime, not the person who just generated a random point. Like, uh, right. yeah, we, we have connections with the FBI cybercrime unit. Like we would definitely like, um, report anyone who is doing like illegal shit or bad shit. Like we, we have those connections. Like, where, where do those connections come from? Are those connections coming from because the app is so popular or is it that you guys? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, yeah, people started fucking around on railways and we got the railway railroad commissioner uh, personally emailed me like, and wow. <laughs> he was like, yeah. And then I have to report you guys to the FBI since I made this. And, and we actually cozied up to them because we were like, we have a big thing going and we have a small team and it's like a big force going on. Like we might need some help. So we reached out to those resources and um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm being targeted people like people like are crazy, man. Like, and I was warned that this would happen. Huh? How are they targeting you? 
just, just in a lot of ways, man, like just getting like my email accounts hacked and my Twitter, like packed and shit like that. Like just for stupid reasons, you know, probably just for like bragging rights or something, right. but like, I am getting targeted and it's like just insane to me. Like I just wanted people to go on a walk. Like my mom used to take <laughs> me to a walk and say, let's go see what we can see. That's what she would say. See, let's go see what we can see. And we would just go walk around. And, and that's all I really <laughs> wanted. And it ended up making this like 40 graffiti of, across the entire earth. But it, it was a fun ride. It's still interesting. We're, we're really buckling down now and becoming more scientific with our research. So like we're really going to make the best effort to like deal with academics and have like real tangible data. Um, and I think that will bring us more back to our roots because I think people just didn't really understand what was going on with Randonautica. They just heard these spectacular videos and got all creeped out. And, you know, it went from that 25 to 30 year old demographic to probably like under 18 right. to 18. And then it's like, yeah, you can't trust teenagers with anything, you know? So Gen Z scares the shit out of me. I mean, right. like, yeah, <laughs> no. they're crazy. So I, I don't know. It is, it's, 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 it's been a beautiful thing and it's been an ugly thing at the same time. And that's just life, you know, if it, and if it wasn't truly random, you wouldn't see, you, you wouldn't see only good things, you know, if, if it was, if it was, if it was, if it was, you know, like it's, it's random. So you're going to find and when you have 18 million people searching the earth for random stuff, going to places people have never been or haven't been in a long time, you're going to find some weird stuff. Like the probability of you finding anything in existence once you have enough people searching is like 100 percent. Like once you get enough people. So that's kind of like what we're kind of like heading towards is like kind of maybe defining our technology a little bit better and maybe like find some sunken sea treasure or something, get that on film. That would be cool. I would really like that. Um, we're going to do um, another, I, I want to use it for healing. Um, that's basically all I can say at this point, but we have some like hard hitting scientists who are helping with us and uh, we're going to use it for healing. And that may wow. sound surprising, but I, I, uh, yeah, that's all I can say about it, that. It sounds it sounds like you're an occultic Satanist. <laughs> yeah. people. What do you think you are, Jesus? <laughs> oh man. Uh, okay. Well, I mean, that's all you can say. That's all you can say. Uh, yeah. Listen, um, I'm, I'm trying to make many notes because uh, I, this is uh, I'm fascinated by just this uh, whole conversation. Uh, let me ask you about the YouTube. You, you mentioned about YouTube videos and, yeah. and I talked to you about it briefly before we started. Right. I, I am somebody who really enjoys watching paranormal YouTube videos. Yeah. I get the sense on some channels that, uh, they are putting on and yeah. uh, just because it's like, you, cause as somebody who deals with the paranormal in a sense, and I hear people's experiences and the, 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 the efficient turnover rate that these guys are putting out videos. I'm just like, right. at one point, I mean, th th like just one of these videos, it would be a home run story on my show, let alone right. every video they put out every week or whatever. Um, right. now, some of these guys have been tapping into the random knot app. And, right. and like I said to you, I still watch it. I don't care if it, I like, I don't know if it's fake until like, maybe it would ruin it for me if they came out and said, yeah, we're faking it. But until uh, they, I, I hear that, I find it so entertaining that I just got to watch. It. I love it. I, I loved it until I found out people were just like, why are you stalking people? And I was right. like, you aren't in on the joke. Like <laughs> I, that kind of made me kind of go, Oh no, humanity's yeah. kind of, going down a dark path a little bit. Like I really did kind of trust that people would have the discernment to be able to tell if the creepy baby doll was placed there 10 minutes ago or not. Like, right. Or if someone was just like having their friend follow them in the car and then they're like, Whoa! so like, I mean, I'm not bashing those people because I grew up in the theater. I made my performance debut at 10 years old. Randonautica is my great creative masterpiece. I am not going to bash someone for their art. 
period. Dude. Even if I think they're bastardizing what I did, that's their art and art is subjective. And, and, you know, people want to say that it like the YouTube is what like got us famous or whatever. We had over a billion hits on TikTok before any of that YouTube stuff even happened. Wow. So, yeah. So, I mean, and, and, and that was, that was during the height of the pandemic. So I'm interested now that things are starting to thank God, like level out people are getting vaccinated. Hopefully we're returning to the new normal. <laughs> How do you return to a new normal? Don't get me started. Okay. Like, let's, let's just, let's just leave that there because I, I, yeah. I, I don't need my show getting canceled Deeper because I'm about to, yeah. like, like you, you just said something. I'm just like, I'm going to, my head's going to burst. So. <laughs> so, no, I, I, I agree. Ask, I agree. But let, let me ask I you just need this new landscape of, of what, of what, what because I, I mean, I'm on record on a podcast saying, Oh, I think next year there's going to be a big economic thing and people are going to have more time on their hands to do this. That's why I'm investing in this app. I, I'm on record saying that in 2019. And it was like before, like right before that stuff happened. And, and, and crazy. like it, j- just crazy, crazy. And uh, yeah, I, I knew the day that I was going to quit my job. Like when I started that job and really? I didn't know I was going to quit because of the p- pandemic. But I knew the date for some reason. How'd you know the date? I just knew. I it just, just came knew. to you. I, it, it just came to me, and that was the day I met my wife. <laughs> wow! All right, listen. Yeah. I, I got to tell you this. So by the time this airs, people are already going to know what I'm talking about. Uh, but Josh, I'm telling you right now, what you're talking about, uh, you might really enjoy the show that I'm dropping uh, on Thursday this this okay. week. Uh, it, it's uh, uh, November 11th is when it's dropping, okay. and it's about. Gematria and the guy I have on all these numbers started coming to him and uh-huh. he and he started like it was like he was chosen to decipher these numbers and he's gone down yeah. this crazy hole and uh it, it, the, it, his conclusions are out that of is world. super interesting to me because that is not something that comes to me um intuitively. So I would be very interested in learning about that. And, uh, yeah, no, I, I love doing this show because the, my, my favorite shows are ones where I learned something and I, I definitely learned something on this show. So awesome. thank you for having me on. Dude. Absolutely, man. Uh, listen, before we roll though, I have to ask you, you, brought, anything you, brought, I got all day. Okay, cool. Uh, you brought up, uh, the dead body in Seattle. Yes. Now is the unfortunate incident in Seattle. Right. So first this is a two part question. One, I want you to just kind of lay out to the people who maybe don't know what the story is behind that. And also, do you have any of your, like like your top, like two or three, or even just one bizarre stories that happen through people that have been using Rand or not? And it doesn't have to be something that like you, you like necessarily agree with, like, like maybe they, those people were trying to find dead body and they found dead body. I don't know. But right. uh, what are some of the bizarre things that you guys have experienced with the app too? There's so many, man. Like, like, okay. So the first one. I had my first, like first time I generated an anomaly and went in the woods in Dallas and I found this drum. Are you serious? Yeah. That was like the first thing I found. And that, I mean, if you talk, talk about like shamanry and stuff, the drum is like so central to all that. Right. And just recently, actually I found on Craigslist, someone selling a drum just like this, right where I found it, except it had a snake on it. Now where I found this drum, I took my best friend cause I didn't touch the drum for like three months. I brought my best friend and right at eye level, there was a snake earring right at his eye. Like, I have the snake earring, but it's not in here, but I would show you, but it was right on a vine, right in his eye, like four feet away from the drum. I go back another time and I almost step on a Texas pygmy rattlesnake, which is like a red rattlesnake. 
rust colored rattlesnake. I didn't even know there was red rattlesnakes, but when I heard the rattle of that rattlesnake's tail, it permanently heightened my awareness. I was seeing snakes out of the corner of my eye for like weeks. Like, yeah, I mean, I'm sure people could spin that into some occult experience and you know, it kind of was, it creeped me out. It sure did. And like, do I have an explanation for that? I do not. So like, yeah, you are diving into the mystery. You need to be cognizant of that. Like, and I don't necessarily think it's bad though, because like, but you need to be cognizant that you are affecting your timeline and these waves that you're affecting could not manifest for years down the line. Like in that same forest, I found a crowbar. And then like a year or two later, I locked myself out of the house and I was like, fuck, how am I going to be in my house? And I remembered I found that crowbar and I had it in my truck and I just popped my door open with the crowbar and I was in my house. So it's like, I found this crowbar while I was running running and it saved me from like being locked out of my house and not having my keys and trying to go to work or something like that. Yeah. So it can affect things down the line and you are, you are messing with your fate. If there is such a thing, you are. Uh, and personally, like, I like that. I like that idea. Oh, yeah. Other people may not. And and that's fine. And, 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 and I have people that I work with who are like, yeah, I wouldn't use Randonautica, but they're in the same kind of space and we're working together. So it's, it's interesting how that works. But like, it's not for everyone. I'm not trying to say it is for everyone, but uh, we have had a lot of cool stories. Like uh, I'm very interested, like I said, in healing using random like So we have a lot of really good evidence towards people dealing with grief using random Nautica. They'll like oh, wow. find like where their grandma died or something. And they'll be like, it helped me come to terms with that loss. So like it'll constantly, I, this is one that I hear very commonly. And, and as much as I get accused of being a Nazi shapeshifter, by the way, 600 of my people died in the Holocaust. So that's not possible, but mm. um, as much as I get that accusation, I get people in my Instagram inbox every single day saying, you change my perspective on reality in one single random not trip and that is what keeps me going and and that's why i do it and if a a thousand people use it and don't get it but one person gets something out of it i will keep doing this and dig my heels into the dirt and keep doing it for as long as i possibly can and it is not cheap to rent servers for millions of people. <laughs> like, that's something I found out real quick when I got a six grand server bill. And I was like, whoa, we got to like tighten up ship a little bit. Yep, but yep. all of a sudden yeah. you're, you're selling a car, moving back in with mom just to keep the lights on. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's funny actually is I, I when, when Rainer Nautica like was introduced to the world, basically the, the Telegram bot, uh, my father had a stroke like maybe that day or maybe the next day or the day before, like, I can't quite remember, but it was like the same week. My my dad had a stroke. And so I had a lot of time on my hands because I was his sole caretaker and I had a house because then my my father and my mother were divorced at the time. They're still divorced, but they live together now. But I was caring for my dad because a stroke patient, they are, they can be very difficult to deal with. And my dad was a boxer he was a bad dude. Like, I mean, he's a good dad, but he was a bad motherfucker. And when you got somebody who had a stroke, they're not all the way there, you know? So I was kind of like living in a crazy house almost like, and I had a lot of time to go random naughty because like I was caring for my dad at the time. And then I had a lot of like time to, to deal with my dad. And so like, I forgot where I was going with this, but when, when I, started random knots there was there was there was this feeling that i was like opening like a huge like tunnel or something floodgate or something and it just spread like wildfire i mean it just it, it wasn't me i just happened to make a subreddit 
and post a few pictures on it and host a telegram. Oh, that's what I want to tell you. Okay. So it's living with my dad. And then as soon as I'm putting, um, this telegram bot up, uh, thunderstorm hits, takes my internet down. <laughs> so I call the company, they come out and fix it happens again. <laughs> thunderstorm hits tree brings my internet down. And both times I, I put my computer back at my mom's house and just kept, kept it going. So like the, the stasis field, it really does push back kind of like it, there really is a pushback there. Like, and so I think it is only for like the adventurous and the curious and like, and it will give you the chills. It will give you the creeps and, and that's part of it. And like, if you're not into that, then yeah, don't do it. But if you're, it doesn't have to give you the chills. It really is only creeped me out when I saw a snake, when I it took me to somewhere where I saw someone got shot previously, I didn't want to explore that area. It was scary. Um, that's really the only times I've been really creeped out. Like I, I have not been that creeped out. I, I use it at night though. And I got really creeped out. So I think a lot of people are like using it at night and getting creeped out. And like, you really can't see a lot of stuff at night. So there, there's yeah, a, there's I mean, a, there's a creep factor with night in general. And yeah. so, I, I mean, uh, listen, I, I gotta tell you, um, this interview almost got canceled today because when I woke up in the entire Philadelphia area, apparently Comcast was out. Comcast was down. I heard about yeah. that. And, and, and so I was like, well, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do my interview. And so there, there's the third time that they, that's something to do with you and this app and the internet. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. More than the third time. It, it seems to happen a lot. Like when I went to go meet my business partner, she bought me a plane ticket and it immediately canceled it and refunded her the money. And she was just like, what? This is, I buy plane tickets for people all the time. Like this has never happened to me. I was like, welcome to my world. Like wow. I have to I often do things like three times because it's like pushing back. Like, no, go back to the normal. Get back on your path. Your pre pre yeah. yeah. But I see it as like blasting um, with your intention through all these like stickers that got you connected and your desires and your, your, you know, just, just your memories and everything that keeps you like in that space. And I, I see random nodding as just blasting through that using intention and putting you into a new kind of like just scooches your reality tunnel. So it goes, Doo! yeah. And then new things become possible. Let me tell you something. I, I, so back in the nineties, Steve jobs, uh, God rest his soul. Apple's never been the same since he, he died. Uh, Steve Jobs was doing an interview. I always butcher this quote. So if anybody's listening, just go on YouTube and try finding it. It's very inspirational. But he kind of talks along this, this mindset of, of altering your reality. And he, right. he said he talked about how so often people get caught up in the everyday life, the the motions and going to job, taking care of the kids and stuff, and that they 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 lose perspective of what life can be. They lose they forget how to dream right. about life. And then there's always that one random person that decides that they're in this bubble. Call call yourself the bubble boy. You're living in this bubble of right. life. Everything's kind of the same every day. And they just start pushing through that bubble. And they just start mm -hmm. pushing, pushing, pushing. And then they find out there's a whole other reality on the other side of that bubble that they never would have experienced if they didn't push through that bubble. Right. And, right. and you have to do it. You have to do it. it you have to do the work. You, yeah. have to, you have to go and do the adventure. You can't just like generate the random point and go, oh, there's a random point. Like, you know, you, this is probably you have to experience it. This is probably why I'm so fascinated by your app because you start talking about uh, a little bit ago about the, the randomness and, and taking your life onto a, a different path than you would have been on originally. And 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 that is what drew me with the random not app back in the day. Because when mm -hmm. I heard that, I was like, that's fascinating because that's kind of my makeup. I constantly am doing things that take my life on a different path. I mean, for instance, podcasting. Before yeah. I was a podcaster, I was a truck driver. And I right. just knew that there was another path in my life I wanted to tap into. And I, I, and I right. just started pushing through that bubble. And the idea of random not app, taking people and, and putting them... them in a places that they never would have even been before. It's impossible. It's just completely 100% right. on the quantum level random. Uh, right. I, I, I find it so fascinating. It probably yeah. speaks to me. 
Yeah. I mean, I wish I knew and like had a list of like every new thought that was formed that wouldn't have been formed if the person hadn't gone random on Like, I, I wish I had that data. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to You'll have data. it one day, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. It was just print out itself and it's like, oh yeah, that's what we deviated from this timeline. And, but it, it really is exploring the multiverse because the multiverse is causal. So it is literally inspired by Rick's portal gun from Rick and Morty. So like, if, if you want to call it anything, it's that. It's not a cult. It's stupid cartoon. Once <laughs> <Just laughs> you guys nerding out and going, hey, we can, uh, you know, get past our normal frame of reference by using this technology. And like the fate or determinism breaking isn't even like scientifically disputable. Uh, people want to dispute us for a lot of things, but that is not disputable. If, if, if you're using randomness in your life, you are, you are deviating from your normal patterns. Yeah. That's not disputable. I mean, there's multiple people who do that. Uh, Max Hawkins is a guy who was doing it before I was, he made, he made a, a thing where his computer made all of his choices for two or three years. And he just lived his life completely randomly. Um, so in like, I've talked to him a couple of times and it was like talking to a monk from a different sect or something. It was so interesting because he's not interested in the quantum at all. He's just like, I'll just use a pseudo random generator. And he still experiences like he and his business partner were breaking up and they were like, okay, I guess we'll go to a random place to have this breakup conversation. And it took him to a pet cemetery. So it's like, it's kind of like, it, there's like a humor to it, but even he has experienced these kind of serendipitous. And so I don't know if it's an artifact of the quantum realm. I am not going to say, I know anything about quantum physics. I will never say that. <laughs> I don't know. I've right. Googled the, you know, eraser experiment or whatever. And quantum eraser experiment, the Asher Paris paradox. Um, it's just a, Scott Wilbur in general, his research is really good. Um, I, I forget his, his Comsire is, is the, is, if you want to Google it, Comsire, he sells random number generators. He has pu- papers published where he won a lottery ticket using this kind of technology. Just a three ball. Boom. Auto. My, yeah. my audience just got rich. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Apparently he has a, basket just full of them he doesn't cash them out he just wins them and just puts them in a basket and it's just a basket are you serious and that's what i've heard i i get can't me that guy's that. address i need to break <laughs> in <laughs> los alamos labs <laughs> uh, well, oh, well there you go uh yeah. I, I need somebody smart to help me break in now i'm just yeah. kidding everybody who's listening the algorithm yeah. facebook youtube i'm just kidding yeah. i am just kidding yeah uh, let me let me uh, talk to you. You mentioned about this a couple of times, and you you said you can't go into great detail, but I I do want to bring this up again: the healing aspect of the app. Yeah. Uh, now, when you first said it, my first thought, and probably because of my Pentecostal upbringing, I thought healing as in you know, ow, I broke my arm in half, and the rando nap not app is going to heal my arm. I, right. I, but what you're talking about is more psychological and emotional healing. Is that what you're saying? Um, or are you saying right, you're going to heal right like- now it is, um, I, I will say that I, I believe we will begin to gather data that will help doctors who do actual healing wow. using wow. retro causal, retro, retro causal techniques. So you basically go to a doctor and get healed for a disease you never had, Jeez, and which is weird to think about, but yeah. So like. So like almost like futuristic, like, wow, that's yeah. so I, yeah. we're talking about your Tom Cruise now and you're predicting the next crime kind of thing you're, you're predicting who's going to get sick next and we're going to yeah, the for... government, I bet uses it for that reason. I I'm was sure. told by someone with the security clearance that they do. And so, yeah, the, the government's been experimenting with this stuff forever. And, and you know, it, the United States government has a large fundamentalist Christian base who pushes back on this kind of research. Whereas in like Russia and places like that, like Sony had its own My Machine Interaction department. Japan really? had no problem with it. They have way more research than we do because they were just open minded to it. So like wow. we have to get past like it's demons. Like there are right. demons, but we can't be calling good things demons. 
Like right. that's, you know, that's just ignorance. And that's not what God would want for us. You know, like we want to see clearly have discernment have wisdom and you know well it's it's like with any new technology science throughout the 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 generations i mean the initially like there's oh like i said you're the doormat right now like there, there's yeah. always that doormat where everybody kind of likes to step into that new way of thinking you oh, stepping on that doormat to get in yeah. there you know and I so it. it's like it's like my job is to apologize i love it <laughs> yeah know. I mean, I've never think about, been able to apologize, but now I'm just like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> with, with, with modern medicine, at one time, that was that was it, it, witchcraft. Yeah, so he got sent to jail for telling people to wash their hands. Yes. Like, and, and so it, it's just, it's one of those things where and anybody who maybe is trying to have a hard, maybe having a hard time framing their perspective around this and stuff, um, think about somebody who has PTSD, uh, right. somebody who needs uh, mental uh, psychological healing. Let's just go with that aspect of things. Right. You, like we have tools for that and they're called psychologists and you right. go to a psychologist, which is a tool to, to help you mentally heal, emotionally heal. And without that tool, you, you would be hard. It would be a lot harder for you to heal from that damage. And so, right. so in a sense, you're, you're, you're hoping that random not app can be yep. that, that kind of a tool. Yeah, I can't speak on it too much because we haven't really fleshed the idea sure. out too much. And I don't want to like, you know, throw people's names out there um, without having accomplished it first. But um, I do think this would be the, the highest level for me of using the, this technology is to heal people. Like not, I'm not cheap, cheap drills. I'm deep hope, you know, like, and, and yeah, there are, um, techniques people can use psychologically heal from stuff. And a lot of the time people don't want to, and you can't get them to, Wow! and you have to love them anyway. And, and you find that just by loving them, they get a little better, but you kind of have to put your guard up because they want to be sick and they choose to be sick. And then that's kind of what happens like with this retrocausal healing stuff where you like go back to your past self and send love to your past self. I mean, I'm sure people have heard of these kind of meditations, you know, and, and we want to start kind of like objectifying some of this. So like, but you can't make everyone do that. And, and PTS, the nature of PTSD splits your imaginal uh, memory. So you literally are misjudging people's intentions. You are misjudging things. So you would think maybe that the healing is the thing that's bothering you. And it's like, no, <laughs> like it's crazy, but that's how it is. And, 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 and the answer isn't like, Oh, well, if they don't want it, then you can do this. It's just like, you just got to love them anyway. And they're choosing to, to be that. And it, it really is crazy that it always kind of like winds down like a psychedelic acid trip where you were out of your body and then you go back and you're like, oh, I'm me. I'm this. I'm doing this. I'm oh, and you're happy about it. And you're like that. I'm doing what I chose to do and all these decisions in my life that made me me like they were for a reason and they were intentional. Even if you didn't know that, you know, being a trucker would lead to you being a paranormal investigator, like, or something, you know, if, even if you didn't know, you had a feeling and you pushed towards that, you know, yeah. I've been an actor, I've been a circus performer, I've been a, a window washer, I've been a uh, HVAC guy, I've been a CEO of a corporation, international corporation, and, you know, and, you know, I, I never felt like any of those things were really me really, you know, like now I do because like, if this is me, like this owl is me, but yeah, that's me. That's how I see it. Anyway, I can see it in the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and the devil horns. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I, I, I get what you're saying though, because like yeah. I had a deep, uh, I had a deep desire to be an impactful person in this world. And mm -hmm. by just pursuing that path, and, and, and through, uh, what I would call prayer, you know, uh, it was, it, it brought me to podcasting and, and yeah. I didn't see myself as a podcaster when I felt like I, this was what I was supposed to do. Uh, I just pursued it and it developed and here I am. And, and I tapped into another parallel universe with it where right. there, there is this Tony somewhere out there that right. I didn't know existed. And, and I went and I pushed through that little bubble and I found 
this other existence yeah. of me that I never th- knew was possible. It's amazing. It's amazing. And, and I appreciate that nimbleness. Not everyone's that nimble. Like, uh, and you don't have to be nimble for sure. Like it's fine to work a factory job for 40 years and, and, you know, it's fine. It's good if that's what you want, but if that's not what you want, you should push through and you should at least try. And usually, like you said, with the podcasting thing, I started podcasting a year before I started Randonauts, just me and my friend talking shit in my room. I had no idea that I would be doing a podcast every day for like the next three years, you know, like, but I had an inclination that this was going to happen. Like I picked my college major randomly from a list. Um, like just weird coincidences like that. Like, uh, you know, I, when I was 15, uh, in our computer class, we, we had to print out business cards and mine said existential investigator. And that's still what my Twitter says and stuff. So it's like, wow. I ended up being what I put on my business card when I was 15. Basically. <laughs> All of a <laughs> so, sudden random life isn't so random. It seems almost preordained. So <laughs> yeah, it is crazy. Right. Yeah, like it, non- the, the, it, the randomness can conjure non-random that's so paradoxical. And like, from what I've heard from a few quantum physicists who go to all these, like, there was one in Australia who's telling me like that they're saying that even the quantum random number generators are deterministic. We just don't understand the variables that are influencing them yet. So there may not be such a thing as randomness. And maybe we'll have to change our name at that point. <laughs> someone someone suggested that early on, and I was like, "No, we'll go with randomness." But like, yeah, I, I I am totally about intention, and I I think that is probably more important than the randomness is the intention, and and and, and that intention and desires and stuff. I I I I because I think a lot of like what Randonauts is was part of my spiritual journey and my self-development. And like and the fact that, you know, I'm an inexperienced CEO maybe has to do with the fact that YouTube is full of a bunch of BS videos. Maybe, maybe that would have happened on its own. I don't know. I didn't even know what a CEO does did when I became one, you know, I'm like how the hell does that happen? Right. Answer that, you know, I'm like, so, you know, I, I wasn't an author, but now I have a book. So, you know, like that, that's so crazy. Like, and, and, you know, like even the New York times slammed us, they still like interviewed me and they're like, they had a thing that was like, sit your kids down and talk to them about random. <laughs> <And it was laughs> like, Tell them not to play this dangerous game. It was like the, biggest backhanded compliment in the world and like we gave this reporter access to this um los alamos labs guy scott wilbur who invented this pulse oximeter if you want to look it up it's a piece of laboratory equipment used in every hospital every day and he has patents on this stuff and we gave him and she interviewed him and she did not put any of his stuff in because it didn't go towards her narrative yeah where she interviewed an associate professor who has never looked into this (laughs) <laughs> you know, and it's just like that's where you start to go. Okay, there's a force field here. There's a boundary. Yeah, it's called journalism. Jeho- okay, because it's not journalism. All right, journalism. I love that. Like, like, I love that. It, it, I love it when I run into good journalists. I mean, yeah. good journalists. I love them. Dying I mean, they, breed. They're yeah, for sure, for sure. But good journalists are amazing and 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 they what they do is so important and like yeah there needs to be like classes or something about old school journalism or something because the new gotcha journalism is so just like well it's boring and played it's the, out it's and, the clickbait it's the clickbait world that we lived in and we that we that we created ourselves that made right. this monster because now it's all about getting paid off of clicks and so it, it's it's yeah. not about the story it's about developing a story around an idea right right yeah and i never really wanted the clicks man i never wanted to be famous i never wanted to be a c-list celebrity or whatever you know but here I am, you know, I wanted to cover my face. You call me comrade, but right. I got shoved out of the nest 
<laughs> because somebody <laughs> chopped up a few people and put them in suitcases and I had to go on public TV. I mean, I was on Russian national TV. Like they actually gave us a fair shake, the Russian military TV. And, uh, wow. Yeah. Just like NPR and like just crazy stuff where it was just like, like my dad was like, you're not a loser, son. You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> thanks for the positive reinforcement dad <laughs> i was never a loser but thanks yeah <laughs> you know it's such a bad thing like i'm finally proud of you now that you got interviewed by the new york times but i got that you know like a lot of people never get that right i got it you know and, and, and there's no the there, street, like, like there's it. no uh when it comes to that kind of stuff so like they, yeah it serves their purpose and stuff but at the same time you benefit from it so like, uh, absolutely. whether they, they say, tell your kids never play with this app and here's why the problems and stuff, they're still giving it the attention that you're yeah. seeking. And so I mean, you win in the yeah. end. It was like an Andy Kaufman what wet dream for me. I mean, just to be toying with the media like that, I yeah. was dying. I loved it. I, it's just, I love it. I, I love the mystery that surrounds Randonautica. I don't dislike it. I like the videos. I enjoy the videos. I like cheesy horror movies, you know, we, but, but we need to maybe rethink how we're teaching our younger generation discernment because a lot of them, whatever they see on the screen is reality. Yeah. And that's hyper reality in semiotics and stuff. And that is when things become a little weird and like, if you can't tell the real from the fake, yeah, that's scary. Like, it's really scary. And uh, yeah, I don't know how to fix that. But one way was we created our own social media feed. So you can go on Randonautica and get on the Discover feed and you can post your own trip reports. And we have like our own little space now that was because before we had this decentralized model where he's just used everything on the internet and people could post anywhere. We're still doing that, but we also have a centralized feed now and it's going to like have options for users to show their location if they want to, because we have people who are like, they're tracking us. And then we also have people who are like, Hey, can I show my location to my friends? And it's like, yeah, sure. You know, we want it to be able to like, if you don't want to be tracked, you can turn that off. And if you want to be able to have your little bloop, I'm random nodding. Yeah, we, we want that. And then have people be able to say, well, well, here's maybe not a random spot, but a really cool spot you should check out. And like, we're going to have that and like, just like a legendary page. And like, yeah, we, the, the, the discovery feed is really interesting because it's an international phenomenon. This whole conversation has been sort of ethnocentric because like I said previously, the United States is a little bit behind in a lot of these matters because of the religious beliefs and stuff. And like, I'm not saying that religion is bad. I'm not saying that Christianity is bad, but I am saying that it has hindered us from some psychic research. Definitely. And, and there are people out there who, whose job it is to basically fuck up and use counterintelligence techniques and to fuck up consciousness research. That's a fact, right. uh, an unfortunate one. Like even if you're at the smallest level, they're going to get on there and start helping you until they don't, you know? And, and that's just like a fact. And like, why is that? Why? You know? And that's the interesting question. It's like, if we're just going to random places, why are we getting fucked with, you know? Right. And if it's nothing, well, why am I getting targeted? Why are we getting harassed? Why are we getting, you know, stolen from? Why are we, you know, getting, a, you know, agent provocateurs, like trying to make us out to be something we aren't? It shows so the you, power of the real thing. So you've really experienced a more like a conspiratorial angle towards you from being the guy running the ship. Oh, yeah. I mean, and a lot of it has to do with just like regular jealousy and, you know, people wanting to be the captain of the ship, but not wanting any of the responsibilities, you know, and then they get mad that they're not the captain of the ship. And it's like, well, dude, you didn't do any of the things that 
you know, everybody had the chance to make a company that made a random app. Everybody had the same chance. And I'm the one who did it. Right. Like it, nobody wanted had the had the gusto to do it. Nobody wants to shell out a few hundred bucks for a company name and have to deal with an accountant, lawyers. Like I certainly didn't. And I thank God for my business partner, Auburn, who's amazing. And she's gotten us like so much stuff. Like she got us the book and she got us like a lot of stuff that's coming up. It should be really interesting. Um, like there is a possibility for a Randonautica horror thriller movie. Oh, which yeah. Would be super duper cool. So uh, I'm not holding out too much on that because, you know, everybody has a script that they're trying to flip. But I think that would be really cool. I do appreciate the horror thriller genre and, you know, but it, it, it's, it's, we do have the creative control sort of to, I wanted to show the breadth of human experience, not just bad stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. being exposed to the darkness of the world is part of growing up. And like, you're not always just going to be in the womb, you know? And uh, a lot of people are in the womb kind of, and they're in the, their little matrix goo and they love it. And they're comfortable there. And that's fine. I guess for them, it's not for me. It's never been for me. I've always just had an urge and an itch to look behind that little rock over there. Cause I think I saw something yep. I mean, or look, I, I was doing this the other day at a flea market. I saw this pot and I, went and looked in the pot and there was like something and I, it, it looked like an amulet or something. And I was like, Ooh, I better not touch that. And then I met this woman named Snowbird who makes indigenous weapons um, for her tribe. She, and so usually a man fulfills this role, but she makes like all these different weapons that show like the, the evolution of indigenous weaponry in North America. And she showed me, and it was this, turtle amulet and the turtle is actually my sigil <laughs> and so like i just randomly using my it's funny how we use that word randomly we use that word randomly for intuition a lot i think it's like oh my, my friend randomly called me did they randomly or did they kind of get your ping that you were thinking about it or right. whatever, you know, but I randomly looked in this jar and found basically the symbol of my freedom and my protection and my home. And like this lady blessed it for me and sold it to me for seven bucks. And it was, it's on my shelf. And That's yet my- you betray that and use an owl as a logo. I'm disgusted. You should have had a turtle as a logo. <laughs> yeah, then we wouldn't have nearly as right. many problems probably. But I didn't discover the turtle until uh, uh, later. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah I-, I mean, I'm still the owl too. I have owls on every entry of my or- of my house. I have an owl. So, like every door of my house has an owl looking at you. Um, yeah, it's like a... Um, kind of like a mid south thing i've seen it a lot in like um kentucky and stuff people have owls on their doors um and i do think there is like this sort of owl consciousness that humans can tap into or something like just like i think there's a rock consciousness or a turtle consciousness that we could kind of maybe it's just the archetypal symbology and then when you go random nodding, you start playing in this archetypal symbology and, and your adventure becomes flavored by the archetypal symbology. You see like a piece of trash that says Thor because it's like the name of a oil brand or something. Then you start thinking about Thor on your trip, you know, and how Thor could relate the symbolism of Thor could relate to your life or whatever, you know, to symbolize to symbology nerds like me, like that's pretty cool. So, yeah, th- there's a lot of things you can do with Randonautica. I, I, I would suggest going on there and looking at the Discover feed because it's really interesting right now because it's from people from all different countries and like people from Mexico City just get it. People from Pakistan, they just get it. You know, they may have certain hangups about it, but they just get it. They, they understand it. It's not foreign. And I feel like here... I, when I started Randonauts, I had one person 
I could be like, Hey, I have this thing that sends you to a random place. And he was just like, how, how can I use it? You know, <laughs> like that I had one person and now there's just, you know, people making their own apps. And I think it's absolutely wonderful. Yeah. And, 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 and I, but, but I don't think that the coincidence, like I said, is the be all end all it's, it's gotta be love. It has to be um, love. Uh, and and healing and and stuff like that. I, I, it has to be. Uh, I, I I think so anyway. No, I I agree. Um, and so I, I would say to the listening audience then, um, be do some your own homework and stuff, even on on Randonautica, but these other apps that are coming out and stuff. Uh, because in the beginning of this conversation, Josh did say that he was approached by a big tech company that wanted to use it and make it more addictive. And, um, uh, this is, this is Tony's words, but I'm about to say not Josh's, but we do know that Facebook did go down that path in its early days of building the apps and everything. And the red bubble that pops up when you have a notification, the dopamine hits, listen, Mm -hmm. you got to be careful with some of this stuff because, uh, Josh told you here first, uh, big tech is already looking into trying to create, they're gonna, listen, if they wanted to purchase random, not app. Uh, and you said no. That's fine. They'll just go create their own. Right. They're gonna. They go- were just strangle us from the inside out somehow, or make us not show up in search results, or yeah, not allow us to be on the App Store or something, or just put it in Google Maps or. What What they can do really is just they have an infinite budget. They can right. create a, a better app than yours with the addictive properties they're looking for. So once they get right. users on it, they never leave, and eventually right. they just squeeze you out that way. Right. I, I wonder why they're not. I mean, people are doing a pretty good job of making interesting stuff right now. Um, but I think they are so busy copying us that they aren't thinking right. what's next. Not, we're we're not always going to have like that next thing that we've been working on for six months. And then they're yeah. going to be like, fuck. Now we have to make a whole <laughs> social media feed. God damn it. Yeah, Just yeah. got to finish with ripping off their old app. So, I mean, I got invited to a pretty prestigious tech conference yesterday. So that's really exciting. Um, And um, we'll be talking about like the future of gaming and the future of like what business might look like and stuff like that. Um, I'll tell you what, um, you, you got a lot of stuff going on. Uh, for you guys, I, I'm really interested in it, and uh, I, I had to start earlier. And I just wanted to tell you before I forget. Uh, Go ahead. Don't be surprised if within the next year or two, you guys are contacted by Neuralink, Elon Musk. Right. With what you guys are doing and what he's doing on the scientific end, I see a, a, a marriage there that, it, that yeah. maybe that you don't want, but he, I imagine he would want that marriage definitely. He would want the community for sure. The, the the BCI thing, yeah, I totally believe that an implant is not necessary. And why would you need an implant if it's not necessary? So that's my tidbit. That well, I'm gonna on, more into yeah, it. On, on on that note, we'll want, bring the ship in for uh, it's for some docking. Bring the plane in for a landing because uh, uh, you just said something that I. I I'm just going to let go. Uh, yeah, we want to put the tail out a little too much and turn the ship too far. So. Yeah, yeah. We, we're yeah. running low on fuel, so we got to make sure we don't get lost at sea. So, <laughs> uh, listen, Josh, I appreciate you being here. And, Funny, uh, it's been brilliant, man. I hope, I hope I'm going to get to be a regular, man. Oh, for sure, dude. This has been just a pleasure. And uh, anybody listening, if you're interested, check out Randonautica app. And uh, if, if you're a little... Um, nervous about it for your own convictions or something like that. If you're just feeling like, Hey, listen, I, I would say err on the side of caution then for yourself. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. it, for, yourself. for me, yeah. I, I find it very fascinating. Uh, I've had so many people talk to me about it from different angles. I've had people say that it's, it's not a good app for people to be using. It's bad and all that stuff. Uh, and, and over the time I, I really started thinking, you know what? I just need to talk to somebody at Randonautica. Right. And, and I'm glad yeah. I'm glad we did because uh, I'm walking away from this saying it's a you guys are tapping into a science that is very new. People who yeah. study quantum physics don't know how it works completely. And therefore, yeah. you guys, as the ones having this this app, you're learning as you go. 
And yeah, that's okay. and I agree that caution is very wise at For this sure. point in the game. Yes. And 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 I I obviously was cautious. Like when I found that drum, I didn't t- touch it. I didn't take it home. I didn't, you know, know what was attached to it or what happened. But it ended up being like the thing that kind of like propelled ran Veronica in the early days because people were kind of just watching and seeing what was going to happen. And then I found that drum and people were like, Oh, there's stuff out there. Let's go find it. And then after yes. that, it was just like people finding weird structures built in the desert and UFOs. I mean, we I got oh, three, man. three different UFOs on video. Um, yeah. So yeah, check out the official guide to random nautica. If you want to get into like the, real like heavy duty kind of it's 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 written for the masses but i do go into a lot of really deep kind of scientific stuff in one of the chapters so if you're really interested in like the technical stuff the guide to randonautica is out um just check out our discover feed um it's free to use the app um the anomalies which are the ones that like use a lot of randomness they use more processing power. So unfortunately those are limited. You can only do like 20 a day or something. I'm not sure what the number is now, but if you go to the pseudo random and just do a blind spot location, you can do unlimited random points for free. All you need is an email to sign up. You can use a throwaway email if you want. Um, Yeah. And just, if you want experiment with it, and I would definitely recommend bringing a friend, don't do it at night, use situational awareness. If your body is telling you, I should not be going to this kind of shady area of town. Don't go because the app told you to go. People are like, I got stuck in a riot because of your app. This is something I've heard. I'm just like, yeah, but you weren't really paying attention. You were walking into a riot. Were you like, I don't, I don't get that, but yeah. So, so be careful, have fun. Thanks guys. <laughs> absolutely. And, and I'll just say this. I know the audience is listening right now and they're like, Tony hears this and he's thinking, okay, don't go alone. Don't go at night. I'm definitely going to do that. So <laughs> that's just the way I, I, I went exploring an entire, uh, abandoned industrial complex by myself. And people are like, you were insane for doing it alone. I'm like, I didn't even think about it being insane yeah. to do it alone. But, uh, all right, Josh, I'm gonna let you go. Thanks a lot, man. All right, man. Thanks, Tony. That was a good one. Thanks, man. Well, that's the show, everybody. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, please share the show with your friends. I don't care where or how you share the show. Just share the show if you enjoyed it. If you've ever listened to any kind of content revolving around Randonautica, maybe this was more enlightening for you because we actually got to talk to the guy who started the whole thing, the CEO of Randonautica app. And I really hope you guys maybe learned something from it. Curious. I don't know. I just hope you guys enjoyed this conversation. And until next week, friends, stay safe, take care, and remember, the truth will set you free, but first it'll piss you off. Bye. Awakened from the forest in the depths of the abyss, this creature is a paradigm of time lost and time itself. It fears no one. It adheres to no rule that man can create. It forges its own path, and yet its path remains hidden from the world. The sphere of his existence is beyond most comprehension as it exudes its power quietly but transcendent. It needs no one's approval to exist, but yet its very existence is sought after by many. It watches. It learns. Adapts to the ever-changing environment around it, even as the environment is wrought with corruption. It battles the corruption only when pressed or for the protection of others like it. It is a mirage that few will ever understand. It's a cornucopia of knowledge from an era long past. It's free. It's Bigfoot. My fantasies always consisted of making it big. My soul was nothing more than a bargaining chip. Marketing is what they tell you to do and what you're willing to give. Larking to the fullest extent. I don't wait, I shoot first like Han on a rodeo. And these people don't understand me like reading Enochian. Stretch thin. 
like pulling an accordion. My heart ain't primordium. All these historians telling us lies, setting aside everything is medicalized. Politicians selling the ride. I better me die where the relevance lies. They dressing a light reptilians. My resilience is brilliant. I'm here to lead the rebellion on hellion, salient, alien with no melanin. I'm a yeti hiding from Armageddon. Come and find me. I ain't even hiding. We ain't the same. I play no games. Hey, thanks for watching The Confessionals on YouTube. If you like what you heard, hit the subscribe button, hit the share button, and hit the like button. That would be a great help to me. And if you want more of The Confessionals on a weekly basis, every Thursday I come out with a special show just for members on my website. So if you want to check that out, go to theconfessionalspodcast.com, hit the join button, and become a member today. And every Thursday, you'll get a new show and you can binge on previous shows, which there's almost a 100 of them. So if you love the show, go ahead and check it out. But thank you very much for being here on YouTube and checking out the channel.